Next we're going to use our chalky block or our terminal block connectors. So we have here we have four wires. So we have two wires from the pump, two wires from the controller. So I've cut off and selected that I want two blocks. If you have these and you keep them as spares in your van, always with a screwdriver, screw the screws all the way in snugly so you don't lose the grub screws out of them. Do not over tighten them because you can shear the thread off or crack the brass. So wires go into this. They don't have a natural stop. So using these, you really need to make sure you have enough of the wire and a little bit of the sheathing going in. That's the outer casing of the wire in technical talk. Tighten these up. Just gently, do not over tighten them. Get the wire inside so you know that you're in, but you're not poking all the way out the other side. You can put two wires in each side if you have to, but you've got that, so just do it properly. Another two another wire in, so this is the positive. And our negative from our controller to our negative of our pump. It's always good practice when doing wiring as well is to fold over the end of the wire conductor, fold it back against itself and you'll get double the thickness or double the strand thickness for your conductivity. So now we have connected our pump and our flow controller using a chalky block or terminal block style connector. Positive to positive, negative to negative, and they're tight and they're not gonna short out because they've got no bare wire exposed. So that's that done. We'll remove these, unscrew them, So now we've done a few processes. I'm just going to separate these. Okay, we'll put our pump to one side. I'm just going to reach behind me off the of camera and find some wire that I placed out earlier. Empty camera. Right. So for this, we're using red and black, just so that we don't get confused between positive and negative. So we're now going to use our bullet connectors. These are available in different size diameters, which denote different amperage. We're going to use the blue ones. So for this, with our wire strippers and our cable as normal, crimp the ends and then pull off the outer sheathing and give it a little, little clean twist. Like so. Give it a twist again. So with these you need to hold on to the metal part. We're using the nail first. We've got our correct wire diameter to fit into the receptacle on the end of this. Push our wire all the way in until we feel a natural stopping point. On our crimpers you will find that they're colour coded for blue. Put the blue sleeve in to the jaws and locate like so, ensuring you still remain to press the wire in the back. Give it a squeeze. These will stop at a predefined tension and that will crimp the connection onto the end. We'll then have another red wire and we'll be using a female connector because the female is the one that's coming from our flow controller or our battery. Try not to go off subject too much again. Hold the end shoulder in the jaw. Sorry, then the camera moved. And then crimp. That's tight. And then we have our male and our female. 
and we push those in and they are secure do apologize for the camera moving it's currently clamped onto the special lighting clamp on the roof of the garage and it moved and for our last last and final step process is soldering so for soldering from our previous connections i'm just going to cut the ends off so we have clean fresh non-twisted wire to work with hopefully the camera should still be in frame yes it is just going to cut off our outer sheathing again and i'm just going to see if i can find something to elevate the camera position closer so we can see what we're doing on camera okay so for this process we will be using heat shrink i need to get two pieces of heat shrink which are enough to go over the diameter of the conductors or the wires we're working with i'm just going to cut these to length so i have now a red and a black piece of heat shrink always remember when working with a heat shrink covering which is a tube we put that onto our wire before we solder if you forget to put it on after you're going to have to use insulation tape so soldering iron go for the gas option use my stand so when a lot of people solder i've seen i've been soldering for probably oof, 38 years so when a lot of people solder they will just touch wires together and then solder it i hate that method if you have cables and wires that are vibrate in moved by vibration or they're knocked regularly you will get a connection that fails so my personal way so we're going to go for our red positive first i after many years of experience i put them together in a cross i pinch and i twist the two conductors the two wires back on themselves so they're within the area that i have and not over the sheathing oh on camera it's hard so i twist them because i've already established a twist connection which is a good torsion free so with our soldering iron that's red hot about 600 degrees with a clean tip and our 6040 lead tin solder what i'll do is dab a little bit of solder onto the tip of the soldering iron i put the soldering iron against our work the rapid heat from our soldering iron will flow and we need to flow our solder into our connection i leave it for about five seconds pull it away and then we have our first connection established and it's soldered all the way around again with our negative side of our flow controller and our negative battery wire sorry our pump wire so once our wires are twisted together neatly there are many ways to solder like there are many ways to skin a cat dab a bit of solder onto our iron be careful not to melt any of the surrounding work around you place the iron into the wire apply a little bit more solder you haven't got to go heavy continue to heat for a further few seconds When you put your heat shrink on after you need to ensure that the work piece is cooled down first the first point of heat shrink touching that will shrink it on and you won't be able to move it so now that's connected our heat shrink is 50 50 so you need a bit halfway over the solder and ensuring you've got enough heat shrink to cover the solder and also the outer sheathings of our wire you can use a lighter you can use a heat gun you can also use the extraction port on the side of the gas solder iron to heat up the heat shrink various types of heat shrink self adhesive clear transparent uh, a lot of heat shrink i have is made by helm and titan company is based in plymouth and it's very high-end 
marine grade heat shrink so for the camera we have now established our last and final connection which is a solder connection both of our wires both our conductors are the same size they're the same length they're tidy they're clean and that is basically on how you solder how you use bullet connectors how you use chalky block connectors and also wago connectors to establish a connection on a pump to a controller if you have any questions about this video please feel free to comment below and i'll answer them if you're new to my channel please subscribe uh, i want to see if i can get my channel up to about a thousand before the end of summer hopefully and watch my channel grow and hopefully with my channel growing i'll open it up to more people and more people will see the videos i make if you like what you see give it a thumbs up share it with your friends also hit the bell icon for updates and notifications as to when i post a new video but thank you very much for watching and we'll see you in the next video bye bye